Hey guys, it's the Anisan here, celebrating my 100th video. I can't believe it, you know, I've finally made it to uh, video number 100. I honestly didn't think I would get this far, even though I've had a YouTube account since uh, May of 2006. And even though not all the videos on my YouTube account feature me, it's still kind of shocking to think that, you know, I, I've put up 100 videos. Right now I'm in uh, John's room. Uh, he's not here right now, he's at work. So, oof, I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> okay, now I'm recording this video to uh, do an album review, my second album review, on a Megadeth album uh, Endgame. You know, since uh, over the weekend without uh, any kind of internet, so I decided to uh, give it a listen. So, let's begin the review. Now, I've been a fan of Megadeth since the Countdown to Extinction era, although I was a casual fan back then. I enjoyed the radio hits like Symphony Destruction and Angry Again, which I still think is uh, one of then-lead guitarist Marty Friedman's best solos, albeit one of his simplest. It wasn't until around when uh, Guitar Hero 2 came out with Hangar 18 on it that I began to look deeper into Megadeth's discography to find out all the good stuff that I was missing by sticking to only the Megadeth that I heard on the radio. I especially listened to albums like uh, Rust in Peace and Peace Sells, but who's buying? Since Megadeth's frontman uh, slash guitarist Dave Mustaine acquired new lead guitarist Chris Broderick, formerly of Jag Panzer and uh, Nevermore, back in early 2008, many fans, including myself, have been wondering what this new guy will bring to the arsenal of Megadeth. Well, listen up. Now, here are the goodies of the new album. Comparisons to Metallica have plagued Megadeth since the very beginning, and when comparing Me Metallica's Death Magnetic to Endgame, and seeing which band came the closest to how they were at their peak, it's gotta be Megadeth. Now granted, Metallica put out some killer material for Death Magnetic, and I'm really excited that they're returning to their older style, but Megadeth has worked long and hard to put their over-commercialized and, quite frankly, un-Megadeth albums like Risk behind them. Uh, the first single off the new album, Head Crusher, reminds me of the crazy-ass Peace Cells era, and with a little bit of the uh, So Far So Good So What era slipped in for taste, with the oft-ignored Jeff Young on lead guitar. Poor, poor Jeff. But, I digress. Many a Megadeth fan cringed when they heard the acoustic intro to The Hardest Part of Letting Go, Seal with the Kiss. Megadeth and Grandpa's guitars. Yeah, like it's never been done before. <coughs> Too long. <coughs> Excuse me. If you can stand to wait a minute or so, then you'll be treated to an interesting combination of Megadeth and a string orchestra. It honestly reminds me of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, if it was led by Dave Mustaine. Fun fact! Al Petrelli, the lead guitarist that replaced Marty Friedman after he left in January 2000, plays a major role in the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, as well as plays in it. I saw them when we went to go see the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, I believe it was in uh, late 2006, and he was pretty good. So I definitely recommend seeing uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. You know, they mainly do stuff around Christmas time, so uh, get your tickets. And it's definitely fun for the whole family, so it's not just like a, a headbangers kind of thing. Anyway, getting back to uh, the album, here are the baddies of the new Megadeth album. Um, Chris Broderick's playing style has been compared frequently to Marty Friedman's, whereas the previous lead guitarist Glenn Drover's style has been compared to Chris Pullen's, although I think that Broderick's style is closer to Mustaine's than anyone else. Some might call this a compliment, and in most regards it is. However, in the context of Megadeth, where the guitar's lead work can switch players at the drop of a hat, it's best when both players have a unique style, so that way we can tell each player apart when they're doing their thing. It's one of the reasons why the Mustaine Friedman lineup is considered the best. Although the Mustaine Poland lineup produced some of the scariest guitar playing of the 80s this side of like Cacophony and Racer X. If you liked or at least tolerated the style of Megadeth's previous album United Abominations, then you'll be in fairly familiar territory, especially when it comes to Mustaine's vocals. Honestly, I miss his Alice Cooper-esque snarl, which has turned into more of an Andrew WK-esque grunt over the years. Not that it's a bad thing, but it just doesn't work on every single song. Dave's vocals have little to no change in tone and intention from song to song, unlike during the Rust in Peace and Countdown to Extinction eras, where he would switch up between his trademark snarl and growl, as well as switch to a surprisingly good singing voice. We're not talking good from a technical level like Christina Aguilera, but a much better singing voice than one would expect from someone with a vocal style like Dave. Now, here are the uglies of the album. Ever since Dave stopped using Jackson guitars and switched to using other brands like ESP and now Dean guitars, I've noticed that his tone has gotten a lot bassier and less trebly. Although it 
does still sound like Dave, I do miss that extra bit of treble that made his guitar tone sizzle. Chris Broderick, while quite the impressive player who has been talked of highly by Dave in many interviews, even once comparing Finding Broderick to Ozzy Finding Randy Rhodes, doesn't seem to have found his own style within Megadeth. I listened to some of his older material to gain a better perspective on his overall style, and it seems that while he appears to be a very stiff guitar player, every once in a while he cuts loose and it's fun to watch him just go to town. He hits all the right notes cleanly and everything, and is definitely the best lead guitarist Megadeth has had since Marty Friedman. Just watch him play like a Megadeth classic like Tornado Souls. But he needs to put more of himself into his playing, or else he'll just be another guitarist trying in vain to outshine Chris Poland and Marty Friedman. Now, the verdict. Despite having a new lead guitarist who hasn't found a distinguishable style, inevitable and eternal comparisons to Metallica, and vocals that lack dynamics, Megadeth's endgame is still proof positive that classic thrash and speed metal still runs strong without having to tune down to drop Z like everybody else currently in the metal genre. So I definitely recommend it. Now here are uh, my six tracks to give a little clicky click. Obviously the new single Head Crusher, How the Story Ends, 44 Minutes, Dialectic Chaos, Bite the Hand, and everyone's favorite song, The Hardest Part of Letting Go is Sealed to Kiss. Just make it past like the minute 42 mark guys. Come on, give it a chance. Well. This has been fun. This is the Andy song. Signing off for now. Wishing you guys an excellent day. And, uh, yeah, video 100. So, uh, I'll see you guys around soon. Bye.